Hello and welcome to Kane & Company. I'm David Kane and today I'm joined by an old friend of mine that I served on dealer council with back in 2000. So roll the tape back 16 years and Jerry Reynolds was the chairman of the Ford Dealer Council. In fact, he became the first two-time or two-term dealer council chairperson for Ford because he was so valuable. And I met Jerry at a time where the internet was really just at the tip of the peak when the bubble was about to burst and we were getting ready to launch FordDirect.com. And Jerry was a real important element of that, served on the board of directors, and he was the president of the company that we knew as Prestige Ford. And, and Prestige is in Greater Dallas, fabulous dealer principal, but he had a real passion for teaching and educating the public. And now he operates a company called The Car Pro. And some of you all probably have heard of him. He's known as The Car Pro. You can Google it and find this show each and every week. So I'm really excited to have Jerry join us. Let's get right to it. Well, Jerry, uh, you come from an automotive retail background. I know when I met you, I would come to see you at Prestige Ford there in Garland and in, in the greater uh, metroplex of Dallas. And you were moving major trucks. I mean, uh, when it came to F-Series trucks, you guys were really awesome. I'd just be curious as a, as a uh, person who's almost like a historian of the industry, uh, what do you make of this Ford Chevy competition? And you've probably seen all the scuttlebutt on the aluminum bed and the steel bed and stuff like that. What kind of advice, because you're almost bridging the gap between the dealers and the consumers, so you, you kind of walk a fine line there. Yeah, I, I do. And, and I tell you, this, this Texas market, trucks are still the king down here. When, when I was in the business for seven years in a row, we sold more F-Series trucks than any dealer in the country. Um, so it was a big part of our business then. It's an even bigger part of it today. And it's been interesting to see the evolution of the pickup. I thought Ford took a big risk when they decided to go with the all aluminum body. But when I drove it and reviewed it, uh, I went, wow, this, this, this really is some kind of special truck. Now, on the personal side, uh, I've got a, a truck that I keep in my lake house, and it's a GMC Denali. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I was just looking for a really low mileage used truck to, to park down there, and I would have bought a Ford, but I ended up buying a GMC, and I really like it. But trucks are, I would have never imagined that I would see a $70,000 hack ton truck. Oh my you gosh, know, yes. That's what I'm seeing today, or an almost $80,000 F-250. You know, and, and the prices keep going up, people keep buying them. You know, I don't know where it stops. Yeah, it's funny, I'll, I'll tell a quick anecdote because you know my father, and years ago when I was a floor salesperson, we had ordered in a, a gentleman a, a big uh, crew cab, uh, heavy duty diesel, rig and it came in and he still wanted to negotiate and i remember going to my father and saying well you know this special order truck we had a custom design and built for the gentleman and he's wanting some some money off of that and he goes well you know just tell him we don't do business that way and he said by the way what did the truck cost us and i threw out like thirty-five thousand. he goes let's take the deal and <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were very cautious going forward, but, God, when you see the escalation of pricing, I think that's probably what is really jaw-dropping for me when I walk around retail lots. Salespeople, when, when you and I probably started selling trucks, F-Series did not even have window stickers. You literally could price them whatever you wanted to. Absolutely. I, I remember it well. You know, and our standard thing at that time was, we just for uniformity, we just marked everything up three thousand dollars and said that's the MSRP. Uh, but you know, it's 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 all changed today. Uh, all the trucks are really good trucks. I mean, the Ram truck today is the best truck they've ever built. Uh, the Eco Diesel uh, in that Ram is is phenomenal. When I reviewed it, I consistently got over thirty miles to the gallon on the highway, which surprised wow. me. I didn't think it would do that well. I've got the new uh, Honda Ridgeline this week, the 2017, which you know they call a pickup. It's not exactly a pickup, but they call it a pickup. And, and we're, we're just seeing more and more people, uh, not just in Texas either. Uh, we're seeing more and more people 
buying trucks to drive as if it were their car. Wow. And uh, that used to be a big thing here, but now I'm talking to people in the other markets where the show airs. Uh, I've got people in Los Angeles telling me they're, they're driving pickups every day and all through the West Coast. And so a lot, a lot of people are coming around on this. And I think low gas prices has a lot to do with that. Yeah, there's no question. You Texas producers keep doing that. I am curious, because you do interact with a lot of customers, what's the current state of, of the reputation of, of dealers and what kind of advice could you share with our audience on, on dealers and their, their in-store processes and, and what customers are looking for and perhaps what you coach them on when they go into the dealerships? Yeah, and that was the essence of my show when I started it was to have a place that people could go and get honest answers about what goes on in a car dealership. Uh, and, and, and it's worked out really well. I, I tell you, people, people tell me constantly they want to shortcut the process. They, want, they don't want to spend half a day in a car dealership. They want to come in and get their deal done and get out of there. Uh, some things never change, though. You know, I, I still hear from people who, you know, go in uneducated, and then I hear from them after the fact, mm. and I'm like, you know, hey, I can't do anything for you now. Yeah. Uh, you went in, you, you didn't do your homework, and you got a bad deal. But, you know, I think, I think the time element is, is the big thing, Jay. And, you know, I'm, I'm coaching people on what I call the, the new bait and switch, which is Internet pricing. Yes. And, and it's and it's frightening what I'm seeing out there with, with all the disclaimers and you know dealers who will put a price online and then want to bump you for freight when transportation fees when the car gets there or the, yeah. in small print they're saying you know hey with plus dealer add-ons I know everybody's got to be competitive but. I think it's a turnoff for people today as they get smarter and smarter and smarter. They're looking for the straight deal. And, and you know, all the years I was in the business, I always said that if you treat people right, price becomes a secondary issue. And and I still think that's true today because when I send someone into a really great dealership and say, ask for the general manager, talk to him or her, then you know, they get caught up in the experience. And if every, as long as everything goes smoothly, They'll be in and out of there in short order. Probably the dealer will make some money. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. You've always been kind of at the cutting edge. And, Jerry, roll the tape back 16 years. And even then at that time, you were serving the LGBT community. And you had specific sales members who were actually involved uh, in that. And it, and it was open. And, and I'm just curious if you're seeing that because you took a lot of uh, – bullets for that from some guys in the industry saying, you know, you shouldn't be supporting that kind of uh, lifestyle. And, and to, to you, you coach me on that. Look, people are people and, and we sell cars and, and we're going to sell them to whoever wants to buy them. Yeah. And, and I tell you, I did take a lot of heat at the time. I got some bad publicity locally for it. Uh, people threatening to boycott, whatever. Uh, and, and those folks are obviously today much more welcome at a car dealership than they were 16 years ago, the last time you and I talked. But yes. I, had a, I, I had a separate section of uh, Hispanic salespeople too. Yes. And it was huge. And, and we had 25 or so people there. We, we took the showroom and made, gave them their own entrance so that the Hispanic customer could feel at home. Uh, we had them decorated up. They were wearing uh, soccer shirts on Saturdays <laughs> and stuff like that. So, you know, everybody does that today. But you're right; it was it was it was pretty risky at that time, but paid off for us. Yeah. Well, I think you're so human, and and you're kind of uh, the perfect bridge between the dealer and the customer. And I think it's a real gift to the industry that you're out there. And, and I'd sure appreciate if you consider coming back on the show from time to time and, and sharing that perspective. Because as dealers, we need to hear from people who interact with customers and who feel the pain like you do every once in a while on the show where someone flames a dealer and says, oh, let me tell you what happened to me. You know, over 50% over of my listeners are female. Wow. Which you wouldn't think 
it would skew that way, but it does. And, and they want to be educated and they trust me and they call me and they want my advice. Uh, but congratulations to you, David. You know, we were, we were four dealers at the same time. We got out at different times, but it's been great to watch your success uh, with your company. Well, thank uh, you. I, I was, I'm going to send you a picture that I got uh, texted to me on Saturday of Jim O'Connor oh. standing next to a cardboard cutout for me of me at a, a Ford dealership in Detroit. He'd gone in, I guess, to buy a car, and he's <laughs> one of my dealers, and we've got full-size stand-up cutouts. And Jim had his arm around me. He looks great. Oh, he does. And, you know, I miss that kind of leadership in the OEM world. I I guess it was probably because we were on dealer council and we were intimate with him and, and he really was a car guy. And, and I really cry for the industry that we, we just don't have uh, what I can see overtly are, are the real passionate, um, crazy guys who will live and die by the product, love the industry and embrace it for its future growth. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I talked to a lot of, uh, a lot of heads of companies, you know, I think uh, of course, you and I, when we when we started on dealer council, we were dealing with Jack Nasser, yeah, <laughs> uh, which was a horrible experience. And then we had Bill Ford, who was a really nice guy, but you know we didn't see the changes that we were looking for. And then Alan Mulally came along. Yes. Oh my God. And I had Alan on my show several times, and I tell you, he he has that kind of passion that you're talking about. And it was a sad day for me when he retired. Yeah. Well, and. You know, we know they're out there. We just got to encourage it and uh, keep our our, uh, our nose to the wheel and, and uh, just keep pushing this great industry forward. Jerry, thank you very much for being on the show. I look forward to having you back many more times. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. It's good to be here. Wow, that was great. It's always fun to renew old friendships, and it's especially great to learn from somebody who really does care so much about helping dealers and helping customers and bridging that gap and bringing them together. It means an awful lot to have Jerry on the show, and I thank him very much for that. Check him out on the Car Pro. I think you'll enjoy being a fan of that program as well. So once again, thanks for joining me today. I'm David Kane, and I'll look for you next time here on Kane & Company.